Coming up, a Pikeful lawsuit concerning Kentucky's concealed carry laws is bringing more attention to the state's current laws. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News at 11. Good evening, I'm Steve Hensley. A ruling by the Kentucky Supreme Court has sided with Pikeville City officials over a 2018 lawsuit challenging the no firearms policy at Appalachian Wireless Arena. The Kentucky Concealed Carry Coalition filed the suit saying members were denied entry into the arena because they had a firearm on them. As Chad Hedrick reports, this decision came the same day Kentucky was in the national spotlight for a call to action on gun laws. This 19-page opinion from the Kentucky Supreme Court sides with the city of Pikeville after they were sued over allegations of denying entry to the city-owned Appalachian Wireless Arena. The Kentucky Concealed Carry Coalition says it was because of their, quote, lawful possession of firearms. But according to the arena's website, weapons of any kind are prohibited. It's the same policy at places like Rupp Arena and the KFC Yum Center. We must do something. The opinion came the That's same day Kentucky Congressman Morgan McGarvey help. spoke in Washington about creating more federal gun policies. Gun control and other policies are hot topics across the nation and in the Commonwealth after this month's deadly mass shooting at Old National Bank in Louisville. This is an epidemic of our own making, and that means we have the power to stop it. At the Gun Violence Prevention Task Force Rally Thursday, U of L trauma surgeon Dr. Jason Smith spoke about what he sees in the ER daily. There is no town, there is no city, there's no place in the United States that is not having to deal with this, is not having to understand what we are going through. Kentucky is one of 26 states that allow permitless carry. The law passed in 2019. Dr. Smith is calling for action from lawmakers to act on stiffer laws. I don't know the solutions, ladies and gentlemen. I'm a doctor. My job is to put bodies back together after these tragedies. I can't heal the scars of the community. I can't heal the spirit that is broken when this happens, and I cannot bring back the losses that we suffer. But I can pray and ask all of you, no matter what side of this issue you are on, to step forward and begin the dialogue to talk about this. That was Chad Hedrick reporting. As for that Pikeville suit, the Supreme Court says none of the Concealed Carry Coalition's complaint contains any allegations of concrete injury to the group beyond the alleged unlawfulness of the policy. Another reason behind the no weapons policy is because the arena is within 1,000 feet of a school and falls under the Gun-Free School Zone Act. A positive update tonight about Officer Nicholas Wilt, who was hurt in Louisville's Old National Bank shooting nearly three weeks ago. Louisville Metro Police say Officer Wilt is now able to open his eyes and look at his family, which is a huge step forward. They say he is still in critical condition, but is improving every day, and the medical team is working to get him stable enough to get off the equipment. They say the next 24 to 36 hours will be key in making that happen and his family is asking for continued prayers. Some big sports news now. Former Kentucky quarterback Will Levis now has a home in the NFL. He was widely expected to be one of the first players picked last night, but ended up slipping to the second round tonight. Levis was drafted by the Tennessee Titans with the 33rd pick. We'll have much more on this later in sports. As a Bengals fan, well, we'll see in the playoffs in a few years. <laughs> How about that? It wasn't a bad night either when it came to the potential for some cooler air moving in. After the showers we saw today, we are really dropping those temperatures a little bit cooler out there. Upper 50s to near 60 right now. We've kind of held steady since those showers and thunderstorms worked through a little bit earlier. Not much to talk about on Pinpoint Doppler. We are keeping it quiet out there and we'll continue to see the clouds even break up during the overnight hours. So not too bad as we look to start off 
our Saturday all throughout the region. So your forecast first as we head through the rest of the night going zone by zone. We'll see those temperatures middle and upper 40s, especially once those clouds work out. Cumberland Valley numbers, same thing in the Kentucky River Valley. Some folks may be uh, inching near 50 and same thing into the Big Sandy. Steve, I'll have the latest on when we could see a return to a few showers as soon as late tomorrow afternoon in a few minutes. All right, Evan, thank you. Well, folks can once again visit a popular Eastern Kentucky State Park. The fire is out at Natural Bridge and some trails and the sky lift are open. The sky lift opened at nine this morning and you can also get to the bridge by several trails. The forest fire did damage several trails and access to the scenic attraction was shut down for almost two weeks. People were thrilled to be able to ride up to the top today and take in everything the area has to offer. The rolling hills and it seems to really lend itself to these natural bridges. There seems to be more than one, I think. There are. A lot of unique rock formations and the nice little stream running behind our campground and it's just nice and peaceful and quiet. Definitely one of my favorite areas. Several trails do remain closed. The Balance Rock Trail and the Hoods Branch Trail are both closed because of fire damage to some steps. The fire is being investigated as arson. The East Kentucky Leadership Conference wrapped up earlier today in Hazard. Community leaders from across the region gathered to discuss important topics regarding flood recovery. A vice chair for the Kentucky Public Service Commission and former state representative Angie Hatton says even though she was a panelist, she still learned a lot from this conference. I'm just really glad that this conference exists, that folks cared enough to organize it to bring it to Hazard where it's accessible to folks from Eastern Kentucky and that people came from all over the region because they still care about this place enough that they'll show up and see what they can do to help. The award showcase was held last night and if you missed any of those winter profiles and there were many good ones, you can find them all on WYMT.com. More awards will be handed out tomorrow at the first Shaping Our Appalachian Region or SOAR Gala. It begins at 2 p.m. at the Mountain Arts Center in Prestonsburg. Various awards will be handed out to celebrate those moving Eastern Kentucky forward. You can still get tickets online at soar-ky.org. Grant riders in Eastern Kentucky have been working nonstop for funding in the region since the July flood. The land and water conservation grants were just a piece of the major funding pool for development in the area since last summer. Director of Community Development for CRAD, Jennifer McIntosh, says they are working hard to bring in lots of money. We're on task to write over 200 grants in this calendar year, uh, or fiscal year rather. Uh, so we are seeing new opportunities. Um, we're definitely poised to take advantage of that for our cities, counties, and nonprofits in our area. Eastern Kentucky communities are receiving around $800,000 in land and water conservation funding. The editorial board of the Lexington Herald Leader is endorsing Ryan Quarles in the Republican race for governor. The board gave its nod to Governor Andy Bashir on the Democratic side. The endorsement took a swipe at Kelly Craft and Daniel Cameron, calling the race between the two perceived front runners a quote tit for tat battle of expensive negative advertising. It called Quarles a better and more qualified choice and the adult in the room. The endorsement of Quarles notes his time in the legislature and his two terms as Ag Commissioner, but also expressed disappointment that Quarles does not support exceptions to Kentucky's abortion law. The endorsement message also called Somerset Mayor Alan Keck a bright light in the Kentucky Republican Party. Governor Andy Bashir was endorsed on the Democratic side with the board noting his response to natural disasters, saying it's easy for opponents to claim they would have done better during COVID. Kentucky's independent registration has now topped 10%, but independents are not allowed to vote in the upcoming primary, even though they pay taxes that fund the contests that are held for parties. Secretary of State Michael Adams says he is in favor of allowing independents to choose a primary to vote in, as some other states do. As we near the end of the school year, districts continue to face a problem they've had for years, a shortage of school bus drivers. It affects many districts across the state. In Franklin County, the school district has doubled up routes in order to accommodate their students. 
but they are not the only district dealing with the issue. I can tell you recently the, the commissioner and I were in Robertson County and that superintendent is driving once or twice a day depending on shortages. To find out more information about becoming a bus driver, you can reach out to your local school district or go to the Department of Education's website. We'll have that link for you in this story on WIMT.com. What's being called one of the largest off-road parks in the state opened today, and it's right here in the mountains. WIMT's Keaton Hall has more on the new park and the story of the land it's built on. Owners say the new Leatherwood Off-Road Park in Perry County is the largest privately owned off-road park in the state. We've got 250 miles right now on setting on 50,000 acres in beautiful eastern Kentucky. We're accommodating side-to-sides, -side Jeeps, any off-road vehicles. The park is having its soft opening this weekend. For now, it's just the trails, but co-owner Terry Roberts has big plans for the near future. Well, the park here will have uh, RV campground. And uh, within the next year or two, we'll be up to uh, 36 RV sites. Uh, and we're starting cabins this summer. So hopefully within a year or two, we'll have 10 to 15 cabins. A Leatherwood native, Roberts hopes the park can breathe some life into his community. We want to bring the Leatherwood community back, not necessarily the Leatherwood, but the region back here to bring people in and for adventure tourism. The park largely sits on the Leatherwood coal seam, mined by the Blue Diamond Coal Company. The company moved out of this section around 30 years ago, leaving the coal camp abandoned. In this area here, there were 300 uh, camp houses. They, they were a um, movie theater, they had their offices here. Roberts worked for Blue Diamond before they moved, just like his father and grandfather. Roberts father even briefly lived in the now demolished camp. A lot of people in Eastern Kentucky are having to move away because of the work situation. And maybe this is not going to replace coal by any means, but hopefully that it will give a little boost for the area. Preserving the legacy of the coal camp that once thrived on the land by reimagining its future. In Perry County, Keaton Hall, WIMT Mountain News. Continuing their Leatherwood legacy, Terry Roberts co-owns Leatherwood Off-Road Park with his son, Matthew. Folks gathered in Johnson County this afternoon for the grand opening of a new all-accessible facility at Paintsville Lake. State and local officials, Shriners, community members, and officials with Casting for Kids came out to celebrate the opening of the Casting for Kids Boardwalk and Kayak Launch Dock. The project was a collaboration between state and local officials and the Casting for Kids organization. Casting for Kids Executive Director Chris Ferguson says from his idea drawn on a napkin, to today, seeing his dream become a reality for the community is wonderful. It means the world to me to see this come full circle because it's such a heartwarming day. You know, and it, this is for people to give them hope. And that's what we're about. Ferguson also shared that his own daughter has limited mobility and seeing her enjoy the lake with the new additions means the world to him. It was a good night for some bluegrass music fans in Hyden. The Hazard Community and Technical College Kentucky School of Bluegrass and Traditional Music had its Spring Ensemble Showcase. It featured several performances, including a special appearance by 91-year-old Bobby Osborne of the Osborne Brothers. Coming up on Mountain News at 11, meet a young Perry County girl who's touching hearts around the world on social media. Plus, we continue to watch the potential for more showers even later tomorrow. Those details ahead. Hey, folks, I'm Dr. Van Breeding. The pandemic has been tough on all of us, but you did the right 